my Comet K 2025 aspirants, only 4 days are left for Comet K examination and in today's video, I am not going to discuss any strategy or any how to write the mock test, what are the important topics, nothing but something very very interesting but helpful for your exam. Now see, Comet K examination is, uh, the good thing about this exam is there is no negative marking, so every student must appear all the questions, you must not miss any question here. Right? So now there will be some questions definitely if you haven't prepared 100%, there will be certain questions about which you are not very sure but you have to attempt them because there is no negative marking, there is no risk. So like there is no loss of marks so we are ready to take the risk here. But what if I tell you that I will be telling you certain tricks and tips that you can follow so that that risk that you are taking okay, that can give you very good returns means the risk that you have taken there can lead to more correct answer. So instead of taking any random guess, I will be telling you certain tricks that you should remember and you should apply it for those questions which you are not knowing the answer. Okay? So definitely the probability of getting the correct answer will increase if you follow these tips and tricks. Okay? So let us go with the first one. Yeah. So we have 7 tricks that we should remember. Elimination technique, zero technique, dimensional analysis, similar options, substitution, extreme values and particular options. Okay? So I will be talking about all this and I have named them according to my uh, convenience, I will explain them. So coming to the first one that is elimination technique, see whenever you see a question, okay, if it is not a very direct question, if you have to find out, you have to think sometime, so first always focus on eliminating two options and then find the right option from the remaining two options, right. So when you select one answer out of four, the probability of getting correct becomes 25 percent, right. But if you are selecting one out of two, it get becomes 50 percent. So make sure that you are very good at eliminating the wrong options first and then whichever options are left, from that you have to make the correct choice or you have to make a guess there. Okay? So definitely your probability of making the correct answer, marking the correct answer increases. I will take an example here. See, vapor pressure of a solution containing 18 gram of glucose and 178.2 gram of water at 100 degrees Celsius is. So I know that whenever I add vapor pressure, right, whenever I add vapor pressure, uh, whenever I add a solute, the vapor pressure always decreases. Right? So the vapor pressure of water is 760 torr. So when I add a solute of glucose to this, the vapor pressure will decrease. So the answer cannot be 752, okay? And it does not increase to such a great extent, okay? So sorry, one second, sorry, sorry, just a minute. The vapor pressure will always decrease, right? So it cannot be this option. And I can also make that it won't decrease to such a small extent that from 760 to it will become 7.6. So I can eliminate these two options. Now I can see, okay, I will do the calculation and there will be one correct answer out of these two, okay? So this is what elimination means where you can eliminate the options smartly. Without doing anything, try to eliminate the options. Next. Second point is zero is my hero. This is a very good uh, option and many of the times it gets correct, okay. So if we, zero is an option in any of the question, then it has the high probability of getting correct, okay. So choose zero if you have no idea of the question. So if you find a question and there are four options and you find that there is uh, you have no clue about that question, but you think that you see that one of the option is zero, okay, then you can take a chance by putting zero as the correct answer, okay. I am not saying that it will always be true, but since you do not have any option, you have no idea about the question, if you have to make a guess, then definitely go for zero. I am not telling here that if you know the question, if you know the answer and still zero is the option, go and mark zero. It is not like that. Please do not misunderstand here. If there is a question about which you have no idea, you do not know how to solve anything about that question and you find zero as option in that particular question, then you can go and mark zero. Okay? So for example, uh, 2 moles of an ideal gas expanded isothermally and reversibly from 1 litre to 10 litre, the enthalpy change. So I know that the enthalpy change is a function of temperature, so that is why here the answer will be 0 kilojoule. Okay? 
Next, we'll go to dimensional analysis. It can be used in physics widely and you can very easily solve the questions here. So, you know the dimensions of the left hand side will be equal to right hand side. So, any particular unit. So, for example, you have to find certain things is F. I'm just taking an example. Suppose force is equal to mass into acceleration. Okay, suppose this formula some question has come. Okay, And you know that the dimension of force should be equal to the dimension of mass into acceleration. You have to find the value of mass or something. So, so you can see which option matches the dimensional analysis based on that you can find the correct option. Next method is your similar options. So in exam what you can do is whenever you find in a question some of the options are very similar to each other you can know that the answer will be from those similar questions similar options. So for example if I see this question Henry's law constant for the solubility of N2 gas in water at 298 Kelvin is this much the mole fraction of N2 in air is this much and the number of moles of N2 from air dissolved in 10 moles of water at 298 Kelvin and 5 atm pressure is. Now if I see this question out of these all options this is a different option whereas rest 3 are similar options. So you can eliminate this option ok. Now you can know ok one option is definitely eliminated after that you can do the calculation and find the nearest answer correct one clear. Next, we will go to substitution. This can be widely used in mathematics. Okay, So, for example, you have a question and you want to find the value of x or something. So, just try to whatever option. Suppose the question has asked you to find the value of x. So, suppose you have been given with an equation and you have to find the value of x there. right? And option A, B, C, D is given here. What is the best way of solving it? If this equation is very big, take option A and put it in option in the equation and see whether the equation is satisfied or not. So, if you do substitution method, it will take less time and it will be more easy to calculate the uh, equation. So, that is why you can use this method in maths. Next, coming to extreme value. Suppose you have a question here where you see 5, 64, 60 and 2000. This 2000 is like way beyond other options right you can see 5, 60, 64 are somewhat near to each other but 2000 is something very odd value right. So that will never be the answer generally you can eliminate that option. Next if I see particular options so basically if we have these options in the question all of the above both A and B and none of the above. So generally if all of the above is there we will find that as the answer. If both A and B is there that can be the answer. If none of the above is there that will not be the answer in most of the cases. Okay. So if there is a question where you find an option is given both A and B then if you do not know anything about that question then do go and select both A and B. If you find a question where a, B, C is there and option number D is all the above and you do not have any idea about that question then please select all the above getting. So, these are certain tricks that you can follow. I am not saying that these tricks will work every time. It may happen that these tricks will not work. But my point of saying is you have zero idea about a question. You have zero idea about the answer. These tricks may help you to get the correct answer. Right? I am not saying you will get, you may get. Okay? Suppose you are just randomly doing any guessing. Instead of doing a random guessing, you follow some tips and tricks and try to guess following these tips and tricks then that will be more helpful. Clear? Uh, yes, with this, this video is uh, done. So, this was the trick strategy that I am going to tell you. You can apply this in some of the mock tests that you are going to write in the next 3-4 days. Just try to apply these tricks and see whether it is working or not. So, just analyze these tricks and apply them in your practice at this point of time so that in exam also you do not forget these tricks. Okay? That is all in this video. Thank you for watching and do not forget to subscribe the channel and all the best for your comment examination.